On this Wednesday of the first week of Advent, let's pray with a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Moving on from there, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain, and sat down there. Great crowds came to him, coming with them the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet, and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the deformed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind able to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, Where could we ever get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The Gospel of the Lord. It is inspiring to have beside us people who carry hope in their hearts that lead them to Jesus. There is always someone who has more hope than us. It is always nice to meet someone who gives us hope when we walk with the left foot, when we feel a little negative or sluggish. But don't confuse hope with optimism. Obviously, the one who has hope is surely an optimist. But beware, not all optimists have hope, because hope is not optimism. The optimist is the one who tends to see and judge things from their most favorable and positive side. He is the one who knows how to find the good when the bad seems to triumph. Hope is that and much more. The one who has hope lives differently and according to the language of the gospel receives a new life. It is good to have hope but it is also good to know what this hope consists of. Actually, to have hope means to come to know God, the true God, to move from a situation of living as if God did not exist, even if sometimes we say that we believe, to a situation in which we change our lives because we realize that God is present and active. For those of us who live in a faith context or who have received faith since we were children, this idea of receiving a new hope seems a little imperceptible. It's almost as if we are used to this and we forget. Much more happens to us priests who sometimes are working so much for God that we forget that He is everything and that is Him who gives true hope to people. However, the good thing is that sometimes He gives us a bump on the back to wake us up. It happens to us in many ways, even in moments of pain and suffering. One of those moments where one perceives that Jesus changes lives is during the ceremonies of baptism. It is very nice for priests to baptize for it is one of the sacraments that gives the most joy. To baptize a child gives a lot of joy, 
but to baptize an adult, one who has made a serious journey of conversion, so that it is not a simple event, as is so often the case, is, at least for me, much more rewarding. When you begin the rite of an adult baptism, if you do it as the Church teaches, before entering the temple in the atrium, you are asked, what do you ask for of the Church? The person must answer, baptism. Then he is asked, what does baptism give you? The person must answer, the faith. To see the eyes shining with emotion when the person receiving baptism answers in these words, to really perceive that this person is starting a new life, that he is receiving a different hope in his life, helps to understand what I want to transmit to you today. Faith gives us this hope. With God there is always hope, but without God there is no real hope. There are only temporary, passing, worldly hopes. In today's glimpse of the Gospel, everyone found hope in Jesus. The crowd was amazed to see the mute speaking, the disabled being healed, the paralyzed walking, and the blind recovering their sight. And they all glorified the God of Israel, and moreover, Jesus gave them food at the end. It's unbelievable. Jesus heals the body, but fundamentally, he heals the soul. But there is an important detail that I want to leave you with today. The Gospel says that they were laid at his feet, and he healed them. There is always someone who leads me to hope, to know Jesus. It is always through someone that I regain hope. He is our hope, not only because of what He promises us, not only because He can heal us or feed us, but because being with Him gives hope. Someone brought you to Jesus' feet to be with Him. Someone brought me. Someone can take us today, but you can also take someone to Jesus. It doesn't matter when we are taken to Jesus, whether it was as a child or as an old. Today it is up to us to return to his feet, to throw ourselves at his feet, or to take others there. A serious Christian, a Christian who has hope, brings others who are without hope to the feet of Jesus, so that the hopeless may discover the true meaning of life and may regain faith. But there is something even more beautiful. When you are the one who brings someone to the feet of Jesus, in the end you also stay at his feet along with the other. Can anything be more beautiful than that? Try placing someone at the feet of Jesus today, so that you can too embrace hope. May we have a good day, and may the blessing of our merciful God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon our hearts and remain with us forever.